Alrighty, so it's the 31st of December 2020, and what better way than to end the year than with a fun match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a Terran versus Protoss, a best of three series, but this is not quite your regular game of TVP. This is an Archon mode match. So in case you're unfamiliar, Archon mode is a, well, it's a very uncommon mode actually in StarCraft 2, but it's a game mode where up to four players can control one side of the map all at once. We don't see it a whole lot, but I think we should be in for a treat because spawning here in the top left hand corner of Death Aura and already sending out an SCV actually to watch what seems to be the other side of the map. So I think they're going to build their very first barracks on the other side. I mean, they have 150 minerals right now. There it is. Playing with the Red Terran pieces, we have none other than both Bjorn and Maru. Now, if you've been watching StarCraft 2 at all over the last couple of years, you probably know that, that Bjorn and Maru are like literally the highest ranked Terran players in the world right now. I mean, it's always a little bit hard to say. There's TY, there's there's Clem, there's a whole bunch, but basically they are the cream of the crop when it comes to playing with the Terran pieces. Their opponents, or I guess their victims, they're good at playing StarCraft 2, but this is kind of like, you know, the whole Floyd Mayweather versus Logan Paul situation all over again. Playing with the Blue Protoss probes, we're looking at none other than Holy Hits and Hydra's main nexus. Now, surprisingly enough, actually, Bjorn and Maru are chatting away so far in this game. I'm not entirely sure if that's the way they're going to be approaching this. I can imagine if you're playing in a an Archon mode tournament, you may as well use voice chat, but... <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they're not doing that. Apparently, they're not doing that. Whatever is going on, though, it seems that uh, they're asking questions to each other, but they've already decided that they're going to be playing this game very, very aggressively. Now, Holy Hit and Hydra are highly ranked players, right? Like I said. But obviously, I, I think generally speaking, the way that these tournaments work, if it's like a group stage, usually it's like the, the top seat going up against the bottom seat. Or at the very least, high seats going up against like low seats. So I'm not entirely sure if that's the way that this tournament is structured as well. But uh, I can imagine it's going to be something along those lines. The SCV actually gets killed. That's a little bit sloppy when you have the highest ranked Terrans uh, already <laughs> competing here. Not entirely sure what Maru is saying. Man, this makes me wish... Oh, he's going to get... What is this? Five probe kills? Is that what he's aiming for? <laughs> I, I guess, actually, it's it's Bion controlling this, and then Maru giving him advice or something along those lines. You should get at least five probe kills. Something along those lines. <laughs> I think that's probably what they're talking about. Anyways, already five probes right here in the gas geyser, as Holy Hit and Hydra are already under a ton of pressure. This is, generally speaking, the way that these kind of games work out. So there's four probes that were killed so far. I think it's four, anyway. Five in total right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bjorn is chatting again. Why are they not using voice chat? I don't understand. Why would you not use voice chat? Uh, that's a little bit crazy. Now, by the way, you can kind of see as well whenever players, like, select something together. I don't know if you can properly see it, actually. But there's, like, uh, yeah, you see, like, the dashed line and then, like, the, the, the full line. That basically indicates that both players are selecting the same structure all at once. I don't actually know how it works if you have, like, four players controlling the game. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's certainly... Uh, are some cool features that uh, that Blizzard has uh, has added over the years that sadly are pretty underutilized. So, this series of games was played as part of a tournament that Wardy has put out. It's the end of the year, so a lot of uh, a lot of pro gamers right now are taking some time off as well. I know a lot of the top level guys are uh, you know, are spending time with family and all that kind of nasty stuff, right? Taking time away from uh, from the keyboard uh, as they uh, you know, have uh, have played their final tournaments, but apparently these players were still uh, willing to participate in an event. Now, in case you're wondering, there is going to be a Grand Finals happening on New Year's Day. So if you're watching this on the day that this video goes live, um, it's going to be tomorrow. I'll go ahead and post a link to, uh, to Wardy's Twitch channel down below in the description of this video. He's been putting out fun tournaments for a very, very long time. Most of them are just regular StarCraft events, though, but I love seeing this kind of stuff from time to time as well. Now, let's see how this is going to go. So there's a Dark Shrine over here. Um, I mean, there should be detection here in time, right? I mean, these guys should be able to, uh... It's, it's actually, it's actually kind of funny. I have played a little bit of Archon mode in the past with very highly ranked players as well. Most notably, I remember playing, like, a, a bunch of Zerg games together with Stevano. And even though we're both pretty decent at the game, I mean, Stevano obviously is a very highly ranked player. It, like, we couldn't... We're not made for communication, right? Like, the thing is, in StarCraft, you're so used to playing by yourself that communicating with your ally is actually surprisingly complicated and surprisingly difficult to pull off. Especially when you're playing a defensive style, it's very difficult to, like, you know, make sure that you're still on track. Because 
Things like forgetting detection are very common if you make the assumption your opponent, or sorry, your ally, uh, is, is going to be taking care of that, right? Like, it's it's really difficult to to get into the correct mindset. Anyways, here's that uh, that Benchy inside of the main base. I mean, this is so many frog kills in such a short amount of time. This is Bjorn and Maru styling on their opponents so far, but there are Dark Templar inside of this prism over here, and I don't really see a whole lot of detection. There's a missile turret right now on the low ground. One scan is available, one siege tank is available as well. Benshi's still going to town. And this is what I like about Arco mode, right? I think it's it's Bjorn probably controlling this Benshi over here, and then the defense over here could be handled uh, by, uh, by Maru. I mean, Maru, obviously, the best defensive Terran player in the world. I think we can all safely say that. But I actually think that Bjorn is the best micro out of uh, all the Terran players. So it's, yeah, it's pretty neat. It's a good combo, honestly. I mean, not to, not to say that, obviously, Bjorn has got bad macro or Maru has got bad micro. It's just that they, they specialize in different things. Anyways, they've got themselves a Raven right now out. So I don't think they should be taking too much damage here um, from, uh, from the Protosis. Although, there's a lot of additional gateways coming up, but I don't see a third Nexus here anywhere. There's the Blink upgrade actually being researched as well inside of the Dark Shrine. So, uh, yeah, this is one of the upgrades we don't see all too often. It's more common in 2020 than ever before, but... <laughs> so one guy is just chasing around this prism. All right. Um, this could certainly deal some damage. I mean, Dark Templar have insane damage per second. Even when they are countered with detection, they can sometimes still get some work done. I'm curious to see how this is going to work out. I actually like the fact that Holy Hit and Hydra decided to go for something along these lines. Because... Winning against someone of their caliber is just going to be very difficult, right? So, I feel like you have to catch them off guard with some sort of shenanigans. And apparently, the shenanigans is going to be Blink Dark Templar and Charge Lots. Not a very common unit composition, and it may very well be something that Bjorn and Maru have not seen before. Look at them, they're just playing macro right now. Yeah, they've got their third CC. Oh my god, is there actually going to be enough? I, I don't know. This is a very committed attack. So, the <laughs> Raven made its way across the map. They probably won't really need it here, but... Alright, full wall of here completes. I think Bjorn and Maru are onto something right now. They need to get... Ooh, they need to get into the natural, though. Holy head and Hydra. My god, this is already so awkward. Couple of DTs do blink up towards the high ground. That's nice. That one will be picked off. There's one siege tank all the way in the back there, but that's not gonna help out if all of these units decide to engage in the low ground expansion. Well, they're just gonna go after the command center? That might be a little bit ambitious. Yeah, those can lift, man. All right, let's see. Is there going to be enough? Oh my god, that's actually a really good blink. Yeah, look at these Dark Templar, man. They kill so much stuff so quickly. A lot of the SCVs end up going down. They can blink away towards the low ground if they really want to as well. Additional Zealots were warped in too. And they're going to continue charging at as many of those Marines and Marauders as they can. That's 19 SCVs going down. And that actually evened up the, uh, the work count quite nicely. Now, the problem, obviously, is that um, <laughs> there's a third base right now for the Terran players. Good attempt, but they're still, you know, gonna mine with a bunch of mules. They're not really gonna be all- actually, they're not gonna mine with mules right now, right? They need their, uh, their scans, but they can, at the very least, put down mules, and they still have a decent amount of income because of the fact that they, uh, because of the fact that they are making, uh, workers out of three of those SCVs. I love- or three of those command centers. I love the fact that you could see both players pulling the SCVs there. Uh, that's really neat. <laughs> both of them were very quick on pulling those workers. <laughs> This is cool, man. I really wish there were more tournaments like this. Imagine Raynor and Serral playing a game of StarCraft together. It would be really fun. It would be really fun. I don't know if it would go well, though. Like, that's the real question. Like, you expect that the sky is the limit, but, you know, no one's really used to communicating in these kind of games. Are you really gonna try and force your way through that? Apparently so. Honestly, I feel like you could start making a bunch of benchies right now, right? And be, be just fine, because there is no anti-air here at all for the Protoss players. Um, the Prism decides to get into the main base, which is nice and all, but I've got a feeling that that Prism may very well be picked off before that warp in finishes, and there it is. GG is called in game number one. Alrighty, so here we go. Game number two will take place on Oxide. You know what we should discuss? We should discuss Arkle names. So we have Bjorn and Maru. That could make... Mjön? Byaru? <laughs> Bya I actually like the sound of... Yeah, Byaru sounds pretty good. We have Byaru going up against Holy Hydra. That does work pretty well. Or or Holy Dra. Or High Hit. <laughs> Something along those lines. Holy Hydra, actually, as a Zerg player at the very least, that warms my heart, okay? So you can see right here very clearly the dotted line and then the full line. It indicates, uh, you know, which player is selecting what. <laughs> 
it's kind of funny though. I've noticed over the years that whenever pro gamers, so people that are an extremely highly ranked state, right? Like for example, Bjorn Maru, whenever they will go up against someone who they deem to be, you know, less good than themselves, generally speaking, they will go for a super cheesy build order and try to get it over with as fast as possible. Like, I, I don't really know exactly if that's what Maru was doing in the first game because I can't read Korean, but it really said he should, you know, beyond that is, he should get at least five kills with that very first Reaper, right? He got, I think, five in total with the second Reaper showing up as well, but it's kind of funny when they're coaching each other. It's like, look at these dudes. They're only Grandmaster League on the European server. They suck at StarCraft. Just, you know, get them real quick. <laughs> I actually didn't realize that, but uh, someone in the comment section made a comment that apparently in chess, that's very common as well. Where uh, Magnus Carlsen makes fun of other Grandmaster level chess players. It's like, look at these, look at these idiots. They don't even know how to play this game. <laughs> it's funny though, because I've hit Grandmaster many times before on the ladder. I'm currently actually sitting in Master 1. Apparently I was Grandmaster last weekend though, I don't really know. Uh, but uh, I, I got kicked out of it before I even realized that I was in, in GM. But anyways, um, I, I, know a, I, I noticed a lot of people on, on Twitch over the years think that hitting Grandmaster League is, at the very least, close to being pro level, there is a very, very big gap. So you can reach GM, right, on the North American server, for example, at 5.2k MMR, right? About 5.2k MMR is what you need. However, if you look at the top dogs, people like Serral have hit 7.5k MMR. So in those couple hundred ranks, there's like more than 2,000 points of difference between like the actual pro state and then... <laughs> <laughs> the, the skill level is ridiculous, man. It's uh, it's within those couple hundred ranks. The, the difference is the same as between like the rank 200 on the GM ladder and like Gold League. It's it's actually insane. Anyhow, a little bit of shenanigans over here once again. We have that bunker. They can fall back to the bunker at any point. Holy Hidden Hydra, I've noticed it right now as well, which is a little bit annoying. I mean, they're not going to be able to kill this, but it's just throwing the uh, the Protoss players off the game, right? So this is actually a theme as well in a lot of the games that pro players will uh, will go for. Um, just throwing, like when you know you're going up against someone who's a little bit weaker than you, just throwing them off of their standard seems to be one of the main goals. So just going for a bunker over here, like they're not expecting to get a whole lot of work done, but it's going to throw these Protosses out of what is their comfort zone, right? And they're just going to be able to salvage the bunker. It's going to cost them a little bit of uh, a little bit of money. I mean, good defense here, though, all things considered. But um, it, yeah, it's it's going to throw these protosses just a little bit off of their standard. And I mean, that should be uh, the goal, right, for a lot of people. So they're scouting around. I don't really know exactly what this means, man. I really want to learn Korean. Should that be one of my New Year's resolutions? Install one of those like learn a second language apps. Actually. <laughs> I'm speaking a second language right now. Um, you get what I'm trying to say. Learn another language apps. Um, I, I, yeah, I might want to learn a little bit of Korean. Just being able to understand. I'm so surprised though that these guys actually haven't decided to just go on, on like, I don't know, TeamSpeak or Discord or Ventrilo or M Mumble or ICQ, whatever, man. There's so many. So there's a widow mine here somewhere. Oh, it's right there. Be uh, behind the gas guys. Hiding in... Uh, well, not plain sight, actually. If you turn the camera, it's in plain sight, but it's a little bit difficult to actually spot. I like the fact, actually, of going for a bunch of phoenixes. Oftentimes, that can help you not die to stupid stuff, which is neat, but it also shows that you're willing to play the macro game. And willing to play the macro game against Bjorn and Maru is uh, admirable, right? It's admirable, but also very difficult to pull off. So, actually, these two adepts were just invited into the natural expansion, but that was a bit of a, a bait that was being set up. I like it. All right, let's see how this is going to go. If you guys are uh, enjoying these type of videos, by the way, let me know down below in the comment section. I can definitely try and uh, see if we can get more of these types of games going as well. I mean, I could definitely organize something myself too. It would be fun. I don't really organize any tournaments myself, but maybe I should get into that kind of thing as well. Going into the new year. I mean, the problem is, right, I would love to do all of those things, but there's like only so many hours in a day. And you have to spend like a certain amount of it sleeping and stuff. It really sucks, man. You gotta spend, <laughs> you gotta spend time doing things that are so mundane, like brushing your teeth and eating food and getting groceries. Actually, most of the time, my girlfriend grabs groceries. But you get what I'm trying to say, right? Anyways, 
There's going to be a, a third command center right now coming up here for the Terrans. I know I've been focusing most of my attention on them so far, but I actually kind of like this. So they're going to go straight into the, uh, the Robo Bay after opening up with a bunch of Phoenixes. This is one of the ways that you can transition quite nicely because with these Phoenixes uh, roaming the map, it's very difficult for Terran players to properly move out because you got to leave units behind or... Well, that sucks. Oh, yep, that's bad. Two Widow Mines right there. I love this, actually. Hiding behind the Gas Geyser, so when you fly in, they're very difficult to spot. Ah, both of the Widow Mines get killed, though. Although, yeah, that's gonna make attacking quite a lot more obvious right now for the for the Terran players, because those Phoenixes are not gonna be able to fly in as soon as you leave your base. Colossus is coming up. This will be scanned as well right away. Nice scan over here by the Terrans. That is not signed for Colossus, right? I mean, that does nothing. That, that, that does not look like a, a giraffe or a laser boy or something like that. I would love to be able to just read, like, basic, basic Korean, actually. We'll see, man. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things I would love to do, but... <laughs> Only so many hours in a day. So they're repeating what they're saying. I really want to know what these things mean. Maybe someone in the comment section can... Uh... I didn't expect they would be talking like this, though. Like, why would you not why would you not do a voice call? What's the advantage of talking in chat? That way you don't have to talk to each other too often. <laughs> uh oh uh oh. I guess if you do speak Korean, this is pretty neat. Pretty sure Wardy did not anticipate when he uh, made this tournament either that he was gonna need a translator. <laughs> I know uh, I know Wardy actually speaks a little bit of Korean, but <laughs> All right, so third base has been acquired by both players. I mean, this is a nice little macro game that we've got going here for uh, for now. All right, you can see that the Protosses are more than capable of playing a macro game here. I've played against a bunch of programmers over the years, and oftentimes it feels like they are capable of squeezing out more units than you would expect. So even though like this looks like a very you know semi-normal army, I wouldn't be surprised if this is like three more Marauders than these Protosses normally would see. I mean, there's only two, but... Or there's... There, no, there's three, actually. Yeah, no, there are three. <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say, right? Like, there's... Uh, there seems to be more stuff when pro gamers attack. Either that, or they do it faster. So units go into the main base, actually. This is neat. This can do a little bit of damage. There's a couple of Marauders in the mix as well. Charge is not done, so... It's gonna take a little bit before these Zealots are gonna be able to close the distance. At the same time... I mean, the Colossi are going to be forced to uh, engage over here in a natural. Huh? Should be uh, defendable, though, but this is already a little bit of damage that's being done right now. Keep in mind, these uh, these medifacts aren't likely to be able to go at, uh, get out of here. And at the same time, you know what? Yeah, they're defending this quite well. There is a drop over at the third base, though. A couple Widow Mines here into the mix as well. Those burrow rather slowly, all things considered. The drop goes down towards the natural, the one that was inside of the main base, too. And that's all of a sudden, right? 14 probes going down. And even though Terrans, uh, the Terrans here ended up losing a little bit, they still have 69 workers. That's pretty nice. And they also have a very nice army here. So they got favorable traits, and then in the meantime, they also picked off, like, half a base worth of economy. Alright. So that's forcing the hand right now of the Protals here quite a bit. I do like the fact though, that they still have three Colossi. Well, there's uh, Oh, the Widow Mine never got cleaned up. <laughs> oh my god. That's nasty. There's one other Widow Mine just walking into the natural. <laughs> Little bit overly ambitious, maybe, but... Is there gonna be enough right now for the Terrans to defend this counterattack though? Right, there's three Colossi available. These Colossi do a lot of damage, right? And these terror units are really stacked up on top of each other. Is he gonna really... Oh my god, they're forcing the recall right now. He was gonna... Or Dara gonna go for a drop on top of all of these Protoss units. And they're like, wait a second. There's not enough Stalkers left over anymore to deal with this. The Colossi, in the meantime, are over at the third base location. Guess they're gonna be able to... Uh, you know, use their lasers to get rid of those... Uh, those Widow Mines, but... I think they're gonna go for an all-out drop right now towards the main base. Let's see. So it's that multi-pronged harass, right? There's a lot of units that were left behind. How many units do you want to leave over at the third base? 
With uh, most of the stalkers gone at this point, though, how exactly are you going to be able to defend this kind of thing? They're just running around the base right now at the same time. The other units that were waiting, they now uh, realize that there's a lot of units from the Protoss, if not all of the units from the Protoss, inside of the main base. So they decided, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and head on over to the third base instead. Overcharge gets used right there on the shield battery, right as the pylon gets sniped. And they're just styling on their <laughs> opponents right now. <laughs> the Widow Mines are... Locking these Protoss units inside of the base, or they're gonna have to walk over the minefield, I guess. But by the time that they get over to watch the third base, I wouldn't be surprised if that Nexus is gone. 23 additional workers end up going down. I mean, they could just kill the third base if they really wanted to, but apparently they don't even really uh, think that that is necessary. Another big mine explosion inside of the main base and inside of the natural. That's a grand total right now. Oh, off. 53 workers that have been killed here by the Terrans in 11 minutes of time. <laughs> so I don't really know exactly how highly ranked these players are, right? But they're definitely, like, I've heard of their names before. They're definitely going to be, you know, in Grandmaster League, right? And you can see what the skill level difference really looks like. At this level of play. Now, this is a scary army. Normally, this would be terrifying as a counterattack. That's a lot of SCVs, actually, that these Archons will kill as well. Not bad at all. The problem is that there's, like, no longevity anymore at all in this, uh, in this Protoss, uh, you know, this Protoss base. So, they need to win with this force. And with the Liberators up in the air and no anti-air available, there it is. Bjorn and Maru obtain the victory. Alrighty, so this will be my last upload of 2020. I really hope you enjoyed hanging out on this YouTube channel this year. I don't really plan on making any major changes going into the new year. So I'll probably actually, um, I'll probably take a day off tomorrow. But um, if you are interested and you want to watch more of my content, I've got a lot more StarCraft coming your way. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. But for now... I want to thank you very much so for watching my videos, not just today, but also for the rest of the year. I really appreciate you. Thank you very much for hanging out here. Um, I don't know if you... Can you already say Happy New Year? I mean, it's only 10 in the morning over here in the Netherlands. I, I guess by the time that this video goes up, at the very least over in, like, the eastern part of the planet, it will already be New Year's. Uh, so, Happy New Year to all of you. Hope you have uh, an awesome time, all things considered, with the world situation as it is right now. For now, though, have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next year.